dating guy. <laughs> How's that for production number? Cool. For those of you who were looking for the rapture on Rosh Hashanah, um, keep looking. <laughs> we're still here. And I think maybe I might have said that. But as much as I laugh, you know, I pray that, you know, the day come when the Lord would take us home. And when he does, then I would rejoice to be counted worthy. Because, you see, as much as we try to say that, well, everybody's going to go and everyone knows that there's an implied not everyone's going there because everyone knows the parable of the ten virgins five are wise five are foolish everybody knows that two shall be taken one shall be left you know two shall be in the field one should be taken one should be left two should be asleep one should be taken one should be left so you know to 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 say that every single person in the world that calls themselves a christian now remember mormons call themselves christians a lot of other people call themselves Christians and they don't even have a clue about a personal relationship with Jesus. They got a great religion. But to say that all those likewise go irregardless of their faith and just because someone wants to say that the accomplished work of Jesus doesn't require anything else, then I agree that grace has been extended to all of us for salvation, and you shall be saved. But that shall be saved may be, in some way, dependent upon God's timing, as opposed to our will for grace. Because God chooses what he uses, you know, and if he determines that it's better for a person to be used by him for his purposes in the tribulation, then I suspect that God can do what he wants to do. Because as much as people like to you know, get into this Calvinism, Arminianism, free will versus predestination, idealism, it is ism. <laughs> In other words, ism is man, and the idea of the isms is that it is his will, not our will. So all the Arminians, Calvinists, and free willisms get lost in the realism that God can do whatever he wants to do, frankly, because you were created. You weren't made by your mommy and your daddy and we just procreated because we could procreate any way we want to. No, God allows creation to go on. Every moment of the day we are given this day to rejoice and be glad in it, for such is God's will that he would give to us life. He doesn't sit back and let it all run on its own. <laughs> No. And there are some that, you know, as much as they're right on about a lot of things, they really feel that way. Well, okay, but my God is a little bit more personal and involved in that. I see him in the infinite detail, as well as the infinite grandeur of all that is being accomplished and being done. So maybe you don't. And maybe you just feel like, hey, you know what? Everybody goes and nobody knows and everybody stays and everybody's safe and secure and don't got to worry about it. Good. That's good for you. Because every single person will walk according to the faith and the measure of faith that they've been given. And that they can grow that or they can know that in a way that their vessel only contains so much. And in order for a vessel to be changed to contain more, it has to be crushed, put back on the potter's wheel, and then formed and fashioned by God into a bigger vessel to contain more grace and love and mercy than what it contained before. So on this Rosh Hashanah, for me, I want my vessel, who I am, to be thrown back on the potter's wheel. I want to be crushed once again, I want to be remade into the image of his son. Because you see, I find that, you know, my little vessel, my teacup, is only so little. And that it easily gets filled up with other things. That the love of God, you know, the mercy of God, the grace of God, the 
peace of God, the joy, the kindness, the tenderness, the meekness, the gentleness, the non-violence. The non-violent nature that Jesus was because he could call upon any time the Father that would send down angels to rescue or to deliver him. That nature that would be entrusting themselves with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength to the Lord their God. For they knew that they need not do any other thing except to trust in the Lord with all their heart, leaning on their own understanding and all their ways, acknowledging him and he directing their path. That little cup that I am, I want it bigger. Not because I want to be greater, but because I want to be filled more. I want to feel more. I want to do more. I want to experience more of Jesus in my life. Do you? Do you want to have more of God in your life? Do you want to love more? Do you want to care more? Do you want to dare more with Jesus? Do you want to feel the realization of the knowledge of the Son of God in you? in a more intimate and deeper way than you ever have before, then this day, don't get worried about all this, you know, writing you in the book of life for good or for bad or for evil or for worse or for life or for death or for whatever it is that the traditions say. But rather, let's take it back to the simple way and say, God, make me today a servant, humble and meek. Lord, let me lift up those who are weak. And may the prayer of my heart always be, Lord, make me a servant, humble like thee. And let's ask God to put us, crush us from the vessel that we are, back on the potter's wheel to be formed into a greater vessel of glory for his nature and his personage and his spirit to fill to overflowing that we might give out to others the abundance that God is pouring in as we are pouring out to the world. Would that not be a good Rosh Hashanah? Would that not be a great, very great New Year's resolution for you? For in this year of 5772, in uh, September 29th, 2011, that we live and breathe and have our being, can it not be that we ask God to take us far beyond what we ever imagined to do, to say, to speak, and to feel, and to hear, but to go to the place where we know that we have all that God intends for us in this life as well as riches and glory in the kingdom of heaven to come. For hereby we perceive the love of God because he laid down his life for us. The love of Christ which passes knowledge, greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You know, yes you, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might be rich. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. Be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. In so much as I see and hear and feel the animosity that there is in the body of Christ when they're trying to chastise one another, to make them go into a narrower way than God ever intended, to make them go to a keyhole that God says, hey, I open the door, let them come in. You know, I didn't slam the door shut and say, you know, they can't come in. Rather, I have opened the doors of salvation to those who would call upon the name of the Lord that they should be saved. And so why are we taking that place of condemning one another when Jesus himself says, be ye kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Or as Paul said, or Peter. And in this case, I believe it was Paul. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. Grace for grace, mercy for mercy. Extend to yourselves the forgiveness and the mercy that God wants for you to have. For if you would desire to have a ministry, and even as I do, then you need to examine yourselves, and I always do about this time of year, and I say, you know, Lord, when I look back over this last year, I was a real jerk. <laughs> Man, I was busting some chops. <laughs> I was stomping some feet. You know, I wasn't just getting their toes. I was stomping on their heads. You know, I was slapping some people around. You know, I was grabbing them by the throat. You know. 
you know, and I was vicious. I was vicious of them. You know, I was getting them for God. I was getting them for Jesus. I was getting them for pride and ego. And the reality is, forgive me for such as I have been. I pray God make me more so like He is than what I have been. For in the year 5771 that is gone, in the year 2011 of the 28th of September, as well as previous, then I pray that all of my sins be forgiven and wrapped up into the mercy of God by which He has extended His grace to me through the atonement of Jesus by giving me salvation that I could come to God and be forgiven for all the sins that I've committed in the past year, as well as looking forward to the future when, well, you know, God, though you're making me a pot, you know, and a vessel of honor, you know, and I still got a little flaws probably, so heat up the furnace seven times hotter so that maybe I'll be purified just enough this time, Lord, to not be so carnal that I was. And I pray you too. So in that, let's go on with God. Let's move forward, and not to the repentance of sins of our own, but rather to the forgiveness of others that we would share the mercy of God and be brought into the unity of faith. Doesn't it seem like a good thing for a new year? It does to me. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Christ suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should also follow in his footsteps. While you may be able to condemn the world for religion's sake, are you able to save the world for Jesus' sake? While you may be able to chastise the brethren for righteousness' sake, are you able to forgive them for mercy's sake? In other words, where are you coming from and where are you going when you are telling someone what you know? Are you bringing them closer to Jesus or forcing them away from God? by your own standard of righteousness that is not merciful, that is not loving, and it is not kind-hearted to one another. Because if Jesus has already paid the price for our sin, what more are you doing? Playing God by being the Holy Spirit? You ought also to wash one another's feet, for I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. We ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. It's not your mouth that's going to convince someone else you're right. It's your love. For it's the love of God that draws men to repentance, not your intellectual, spiritual, religious, repetitious, magpie, bird song, repeating of scripture to condemn someone to try to tell them that they're not a true Christian. There's no such thing as a true Christian. There's such thing as the love of God that is shed abroad in our hearts that we should bring many unto the kingdom of God, and that they should know God with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength, and know Jesus, and love the brethren as they love themselves. For if you love not your brother, how can you say that you love God? If you do not know 1 John, then you know that you're in condemnation mode, and that you're becoming a legalist, and not a person who's been forgiven by God himself. What things soever the Father doeth, that also doeth the Son likewise. As the Father has loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten Son, so too has the Son loved the world so much that he gave his bride and the church to forgive, to be merciful, to be loving, to be kind-hearted, to teach, to share, to encourage, to exhort, and to pray for, to bless, and to be laying down and washing one another's feet. The Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. I will give you a mouth and wisdom with all your adversaries, and shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. And so it is that I have found in my life that those who antagonize me and try to cause that which God has already said, that he has loved them, and I am called to love them also, then my adversary quickly becomes my friend, for I choose to bring them to the realization that they are dealing with God and not me. That they can be mad at me, but the reality of the scriptures are true that God loves them so much so that they cannot resist 
the irresistible force that the love of God is. Would you not do the same likewise in your own family, friends, neighbors, relatives, scriptures, internet, ministry, or wherever it is, your job that God has placed you in? Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. He shall strengthen your heart. My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Them that are sanctified by God the Father, he that sanctifieth, and they who are sanctified are all of one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. I, even I, am the Lord, and besides me there is no Savior. This is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Lord. For such as it should be in this new year that we all should repent of our sins, that we all should ask the mercy of God to be upon us all, that He would raise us up from the humility with which we are able to acknowledge that we have sinned, that we have need of forgiveness, that we have need to be brought together as the brethren, one in the Spirit, one in the Lord, one in the common salvation that Jesus paid for. For He loves you so much that He gave you me, and He loves me so much that He gave me you. And together we will see the salvation of God come into the world and save those who will call upon Him even unto the uttermost, that he might save them and bring many brethren unto salvation, to the glory of his Father and ours in Christ Jesus. For this is the will of God, that we should know him and we should love him and we should trust in him with all our heart, meaning not in our own understanding, but in all our ways, in every day, from this day forth, as we go our way, we would allow the Father to do, to say, to be for His glory, accomplishing in us His will, His way, His truth, and His life, as today is the day the Lord has made. And we may be given tomorrow, and maybe we won't. But for now, for now, is it enough to just know that you know that you know Jesus. God bless you for this new year. Not just because it's Rosh Hashanah, and not because it's Yom Turah, and not because any other reason that you could think of or imagine or create that you might do or accomplish, but because He loves you. God bless you.